Certain genres are bound to be released in masses. It's either because of their natural simplicity to create or just plain demand from fans, which justifies even higher production costs. 2D platformer are perfect examples and are often used especially from indie developers not only due to their accessibility, but lower budget in comparison as well. Sometimes it's a mix of two very similar gameplay styles, like the Metroidvania genre that enjoys a wide variety of different games. Each new one breeds the ideas for the next one and while they all share the same genre, they frequently differ noticeably in approach. This is only possible due to having many sources of inspiration, since whenever someone pushes the boundaries of what is regarded as the pinnacle of something, someone someday will challenge that idea. Breath of the Wild feels like the ultimate open world for many people, which can be partially owned by all the games coming beforehand. Nintendo wasn't like creating a luminary of open world randomly but had a whole decade of observing the competition, what worked and what didn't. Even so, occasionally they get a lucky shot from the beginning and bring something into life that is regarded unmatched since the day it came out. Super Mario Kart started as a silly spin-off title from the traditional Super Mario Bros. series and solidified itself as the inventor of the fun racer genre. Since then the franchise surpassed even the main series, several spin-offs and many other huge Nintendo franchises as well, becoming one of the Nintendo's highest selling properties in existence. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe proves this point by milking the never ending money despite being a simple deluxe version of a game that released over 7 years ago. This is a demonstration how well the concept of a chaotic fun racer works, which makes it all the more clear why there are many tries to rival the success. Unfortunately, none of these attempts should quite work as expected, which lends Mario Kart the title of the undisputed fun racer game. At first glance, this is is nothing to be concerned about. After all, this should be a good opportunity to have a perfect example to base something off. But unfortunately, the reality looks quite the opposite. Whenever a new fun racer appears, it gets immediately compared to Mario Kart, a big budget production that gets all the attention from Nintendo. Naturally, the series is polished to no end, so that it feels entertaining to play whether you're a child or his grandma. Newer games have to match this standard, at least on a technical point, because people expect a certain level of polish, otherwise they ask themselves, why shouldn't I just play Mario Kart? Of course, there are many more intricacies to consider like map design or item balancing, but I think you get the basic idea. A part of this problem is also how many similar racers look up to their prime example a little too much. Often items or whole mechanics feel extremely the same even though there are only so much room to revolutionize a genre. It's undeniable how much potential is left untouched. I mean you always have the green and red shells, bananas, bombs, but you rarely see individual ideas like the team mechanic from Team Sonic Racing. Again, Mario Kart improves on this point basically alone and brings in fresh ideas like double cards, anti-gravity tricks or different vehicle types like bikes. The difference between these concepts and for example the team mechanic from Sonic is how they expand on what is known and rarely change things up too much. Anti-gravity was interesting because it leads to many new possibilities in terms of map design, but the gameplay remains Mario Kart and doesn't need any alterations. Even the greatest throne feels cold after some while and despite the qualities each Mario Kart provides, the series is a victim of its own success. With tons and tons of guaranteed money, Nintendo doesn't need to take much risks and therefore never really reinvents the wheel, because why should they? The only feature that people desperately miss and want to see come back is the mission mode from Mario Kart DS. It was the only time the franchise dabbled into some kind of single player mode and with great success, while being slightly simplistic all missions consist of straightforward tasks, like passing different gates and were a great break from the chaotic, unfair multiplayer sessions. The real highlight were actual boss fights inspired by traditional foes. I kinda get the feeling they just reused the models from Mario 64 DS that actually played out quite entertainingly. So building on that foundation with much more variety and all the features introduced by now, the potential for a new mission mode is endless. But this is only one example of how 
Mario Kart kinda stagnated. It's one of these series that tries out one thing with each entry and seem to realize the genre perfectly, but still give the impression that there can be done much more wacky ideas. The same goes for Pokemon for example, which isn't a fun racer obviously, but sustains a major monopoly on the monster catching genre to an extent that similar games have to state that it's not illegal to develop something comparable. With such a success you would think Nintendo tries to build on that system a little more and create more fun racer to get the best out of the genre and of course that's naturally not what Nintendo does. There were some slight attempts on freeing themselves from Mario Kart but all of them remained mere experiments. Kirby Air Ride obviously was received with mixed reviews yet appreciates a cult status thanks to the unique gameplay and of course City Trial. This is a case where Hell, the developers behind Kirby, probably makes the decision to develop a new one. So why don't we take a look at Donkey Kong Jet Race released for the Wii instead. Here everyone has to reach the goal with special barrel rockets attached to their hips and while the concept sounds cool on paper, the release date should doom the game. With the Wii and motion controls being brand new, the earlier Wii games had to naturally implement gimmicks as much as possible which makes the controls of Jet Race more exhausting than necessary. There are no problems with motion controls per se but at least give optional button layouts and let players choose their preferred style. It's not the main reason why Jet Race got lost in irrelevancy but it's once again a case where too many forced gimmicks proved why Mario Kart's simplicity worked well in the first place. To be precise, Jet Race wasn't the first time the Kong family set their feet into a proper fun racer. Diddy Kong Racing is known as the only racer that could at least match if not beat Mario Kart in terms of quality. The graphics were more defined, the item system distinguished itself enough to feel unique yet being completely fair and the remarkable mix of different vehicles was just ahead of its time. If that isn't enough, there was even a whole story mode with its own hub world, multiple missions and even boss fights. Many games completed the package to something truly special and just by describing the Kong Racing even with this few words, it becomes more than clear how much bigger, more innovative and overall ambitious this game was in comparison to Mario Kart 64. This is not to say that Mario Kart 64 was lackluster by any means, but it just demonstrates how much more there can be done and that Mario Kart is not the undisputed pinnacle of Fun Racer. If anything, a good competition is the breeding ground for more diligence to become better. And as long as no one is going to rival Mario Kart's quality standard, the series has no reason to grow besides minor gimmicks and little tricks. Now and then we get a few attempts on how that could look like. Team Sonic Racing brought the Blue Hedgehog back into the racing action and although many people were not quite pleased with the end result, I think it was good enough to be at least an alternative alternative. An alright campaign, customization options and a special team mechanic gave the game its own identity, which was undermined by the lacking support. No additional updates or characters and skimpy advertisement let Team Sonic Racing fall down before it could even flourish and should therefore once again remain a fun racer in the shadows of Mario Kart. A part of this reason was Crash Team Racing, which I haven't played but was overall just a better total package. Some people go even beyond that and claim Crash surpassed Mario Mario Kart thanks to the respectable amount of characters, a story mode and more competitive side that is not held back by items and luck. So while it appears like Mario Kart is unbeatable, they are clearly worthy opponents to finally rival the leader. It's also for this reason why I think a possible Mario Kart 9 will start to shake things up, because it became the standard to offer more than a couple of tracks, time attack and an online mode. Mario Kart 2 is a good indication for their thesis, since it's ironically the most brave and installment in the series since Double Dash probably. Different skins, tracks based on holidays and real world locations and finally the return of missions. This is the stuff I come to expect from a proper modern follow up as well as fun racer in general and even though there are no signs of Mario Kart 9, they're just too busy smoking all that money, we can be absolutely sure the next game will tackle things a little different. In the meanwhile let's consider which games have the potential for an at least decent fun racer. The first idea that springs to mind is obviously Diddy Kong Racing 2 or Donkey Kong in general. It might be true that some of the Kongs also appear in Mario Kart from time to time, making the idea of a Donkey Kong based fun racer rather conflicting, but it's all about the execution. Of course they could reimagine the three vehicle system or even better, revisiting the concept of using animal bodies as cards like the cancelled Donkey Kong Racing showed. I'm even not opposed to Jet Race's gameplay as long as they give the game proper controls and lean more on the action aspect. The main reason why a Diddy Kong Racing 
Racing 2 makes so much sense goes much deeper than having just another quality racer. There's still no Mario Kart 9 because A just sells like nothing else and has recently even surpassed Mario Kart Wii in terms of success. Nintendo has absolutely no reason to think about developing another follow up for the Switch because why should they rival their own game? I know that Splatoon 3 kinda challenges this premise due to the upcoming third title although 2 just sells amazingly as well but let's assume Nintendo's hesitant for the sake of argument. In order to satisfy fans without hindering the success of 8 you have to naturally develop something different yet similar. Diddy Kong Racing could be marketed as the grand return of a fan favorite from the N64 days and with the already great blueprint of how the gameplay could differentiate from Mario Kart it just makes too much sense. People will still buy Mario Kart because that's what the mothers know while thirsty fans get the opportunity to finally play an amazing fun racer that is something new. After all 2D Donkey Kong, Kirby or Yoshi do not rival each other since they target different groups despite sharing the same genre. But platformer fans will have a look on all of them since they just love 2D gameplay and get unique experiences without playing new Super Mario Bros with no variety. Other than that Yuka Laylee is naturally another candidate and would function perfectly. Regarding how Playtonic consists of different developers who probably worked on Diddy Kong Racing back in the day they are not unfamiliar with the genre and will sooner or later give Yuka Racing probably a try. Above all they already have Diddy Kong Racing as their blueprint and although some people would call that stealing from older games it's still them who created the original. It's the same with Yuka Laylee and the impossible lair. Whenever someone calls them out for copying concepts from Donkey Kong Country or Banjo Kazooie it makes no sense since they're basically still the creators of said games. The Yuka Laylee universe already has multiple characters to be worth considering for drivers and with all the set pieces their previous games showed there should be enough unique tracks and places. I always wanted to explore the backgrounds of all the level and the impossible layers so creating tracks that explore each location a little more in depth would be a great way to flesh out what they already created. And even though a plain spiritual successor to Diddy Kong Racing would be more than enough to please fans, Playtonic always showed the guts to turn the table. The impossible layer might have been super similar to Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze but the whole game world as well as gameplay had a completely unique twist to it thanks to the amazing overworld gimmick to enter the final level at any time. Or all the different worlds from the first game which could be expanded the more pages you collected. All of these ideas are nothing breathtaking but were never seen in their respective genres so surely Playtonic knows how to make a fun racer a little more interesting than simply copying what is known. I think that's all there are no more possible candidates for potential fun racer, right? Of course not, I would never forget the desired Kirby Air Ride 2. Much like Diddy Kong Racing as well, Kirby Air Ride was one of the few racers that did something different and was even more dissimilar when comparing to Mario Kart. The controls were eminently more simplified with no option to drift or even accelerate. Instead each vehicle would start to move on its own and with only a short boost to charge there wasn't much going on in terms of controls or techniques. This approach naturally mirrored the beginner friendly philosophy the franchise is known for and as an alternative focused on gliding in the air. The same applies to items which are basically copy abilities in this game and surprisingly didn't change much about the outcome of a race. It's more about all the different stars which have fundamentally different habits and most likely decide your position in the end. While the racing part in the game is surely down bad and left much to be desired, it's more about city trial which is the mode when talking about Kirby Air Ride. Here everyone starts with the same star in one big area and has to collect different items and stars to become as powerful as possible at the end of a round. After that everyone must compete in one randomly chosen competition seeing if their decisions during the preparations were the right ones. It's just one of these modes that functions by nature and did not stick in everyone's minds for nothing. All the stars have viability here because you never know which minigame awaits you at the end. Only one minor clue about what is going to happen gives you a hint on what you should expect but other than that it's totally random. Wacky events like turning all the items into bouncing objects only added to the chaos and were strikingly interesting. You would expect they only changed the behavior of items or stars but sometimes Diner Blade appears in the middle of the city or a big mysterious stone. Everyone was hunting for one of the most broken stars in the game Dragoon and Hydra which would guarantee your win at the end. And while this whole mode is great on its own you can even explore the city in a more relaxing manner with the 
stars and find all the little details like white flowers hidden everywhere. Under normal circumstances you would never visit these secret locations or the tiny flowers act like a little wink from the developers for finding their secrets. I have extremely fond memories of simply walking around the city, choosing one specific location as my house and parking my favorite star there. But it's not only the silly fun that kept me motivated. Checklists offer different, rather challenging tasks which would unlock new colors for Kirby and more characters. Before I start to occupy 90% of this video for Air Ride, I need to draw the line here. As you can see, Air Ride wasn't really about racing per se, but instead provided unique modes and ideas that feel extremely different and fresh when compared to your standard fun racer. Now imagine if they flesh out the racing part, work on the controls, add more characters and tracks and enlarge City Try with more maps and events. I really need to stop here, this is becoming too much of an absolute dream. I think you know what game will be my most desired one after the forgotten land. And there's top right. I see, I know I kinda treated this mode as a joke in past videos, but someday I will go in depth describing this rather interesting subject. These are just a few examples of games that offer themselves greatly for a potential fun racer. Of course, I haven't really elaborated on games like Crash Team Racing or the Sonic games in general, mainly because I'm not that familiar with the franchise, but there's still more on the horizon. Chocobo GP is the cute racing take on the Final Fantasy series, and although the game looks rather on the low budget side and a little stiff, it doesn't have to be on Mario Kart level as I described in the beginning, because as long as we declare every smaller fun racer as some sort of cheap imitation of a series that also can take some inspiration from the nearly non-existing competition, this status of monotony in the genre will remain. So Kirby Air Ride. 